Hello again, it's Emily, environmental educator with Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust. Uh, today I will be talking about solitary pollinators, specifically solitary bees. Many of us have heard of bumblebees or honeybees who live in a hive and produce honey. Solitary bees do not live in a hive and they do not produce honey. Um, as the name suggests, they live uh, solitary lives. Um, they typically nest near each other but not in the same exact site. Uh, the three types of bees I will be talking about today are one, the carpenter bees, two, sweat bees, and three, mason bees. Carpenter bees have a bit of a bad reputation. When you search carpenter bees on the internet, you come across countless ways to get rid of them. That being said, carpenter bees are still important pollinators. Carpenter bees are similar in size to bumblebees. The main difference visually is their shiny, hairless abdomen. They also have unique, shallow mouth parts and therefore specialize in specific pollination tasks. For example, carpenter bees are the sole pollinators for passion flowers. The female carpenter bee creates the nest while the male stands guard. The males have been known to charge if you go too close to the nesting cavity. That being said, this display is all for show. The males don't even have stingers. The females do have stingers, though they are still considered docile and only sting if provoked. many different kinds of sweat bee. They are known to be blue and green in coloration with pale gold hairs. If spotted in full sunlight, you might describe a sweat bee as pale gold and fuzzy. The one I chose to highlight for you has a bold green-blue coloration. They get their common name because they have been known to lick sweat off of humans. They are assumed to do this for the salt. Even with the sweat bee's bold nature, they are highly unlikely to sting. These bees nest in decaying wood and under bark, and often choose to nest in existing insect holes. Because of their chosen nesting sites, they make great forest pollinators. That being said, they can also pollinate crops adjacent to their nesting sites. They are considered generalist pollinators and frequent many different types of flowers, including inconspicuous flowers such as the walnut. Have any of you ever seen this colorful little bee before? Last but not least, I'd like to highlight the blue mason bee. Mason bees themselves make up 25% of the world's bee population. This species nests in reeds and other natural holes, which makes it a great option for solitary bee hotels. The mason bee gets its name because it uses mud to plug up their nesting cavity, just like a brick mason building a house. The mason bee uniquely carries pollen on the underside of its abdomen and pollinates flowers each time it lands. The blue mason bee rarely stings, and even if it does, the venom is very mild, which makes it an ideal beekeeping bee. Thank you for joining me on this solitary pollinator journey. I hope you learned a little bit about some of our very special and important solitary pollinators.